Hey, what's up guys? Footy Manager TV here, and this is episode 10 of my Let's Play with Arsenal. As you can see here, we're in the 4th of May, so we're getting really to the end of the season right now. So, you know, at that time, there is a lot of players that you can sign for free with their contracts running out. And here, another player from Barcelona, Christian Teo. He was available to sign, approach to sign. So, um, I thought to myself, I might as well. To me, he didn't look fantastic, as you can see by his attributes here. He doesn't shout out at me as a fantastic player. Uh, but if I go information right here, he's could be the next Joaquin. So that will be three players at our team, three Spanish players that could be the next Joaquin. You know Joaquin is very good winger, he's a good crosser of the ball and a bit of pace. As our two other Spanish players we bought early in the season, they have the same. Alvaro Vidio, he's a bit younger, he could be the next Joaquin as well. And then another bit older player, Pablo Sarabia, who's probably been the best out of the two so far. If I go to information, he could be the next Joaquin as well. So Joaquin seems to be um, the best Spanish winger out there. I know, yeah, Spain, they don't have too much pacey wingers out there. Even him, he only has 12 pace, and but he's got really good dribbling and crossing and technique. That's the main attributes to his game, but he is getting a bit older. But he used to be very fantastic, as you can see, over 50 caps for Spain. So you have to be a good player to do that. And he can score as well, as you can see the evidence from that. So he'll be signing uh, Christian Teo. He'll be very important. And you sort of may see me now uh, going through the season a lot, because I definitely want to uh, develop my team. I want to really make my team into a super team that can be basically unbeatable. Because you know this season we've done great, but I haven't been unbeaten. That's the thing. I've still lost three times in the league. But the good thing is... If I go into fixtures now, I'm going to do two episodes in this, or two games in this episode, I should say. Uh, but now, I just want to show you the results of the second leg of Champions League. We won 3-1, so we ended up uh, beating Manchester United after scoring three away goals. I knew they would be crucial. Uh, David Santon, he actually scored the own goal. Uh, yes, he scored the own goal. They scored first, but then Giroud came in, and Wilshire as well. It was just fantastic, that performance. Then we came to Wigan at home. Uh, that was a pretty like a uh, general thing we expected to win like two or three nil and we did that with Falcao and Walcott scoring actually I might as well show you the goals of the Champions League game because I'm sure you want to see that the Wigan one you probably don't care and so this episode I'm going to show you a Sunderland league match that league match is very important if we win it we've basically got the league one as I'll show you the league how much we're winning by and that kind of thing soon and also FA Cup final against Tottenham I think it is so uh, very excited to play that. But you know, the Tottenham last time, the two games, we only drew and lost. So not great results. So coming into this match here, when we played away against Man United, it came 3-3. So we're kind of favourites to win playing at home and with the three away goals. But here, they were on the attack. I really thought they were going to score because they had a lot of players forward there. Then Valencia, Santon tried to intercept it, but he got their own goal. Then we go to the next goal here, uh, which was in actually the 82nd minute. So it took to the 82nd minute or the 83rd minute. Uh, to score this goal very late in the game. I went a bit more attacking, as you can see, with the fullbacks pushed up and stuff like that. Juru, look at that. Johan Juru right there, and he gets the assist uh, for Juru. <laughs> the two guys with similar names, but they don't look similar, but they sound similar. But fantastic. He's not really a creative player, but how my tactic is, it makes the fullbacks do that. So, and again, once again, clearing it from defense. And this is only just a couple minutes later, as you can see. But then Oliver Giroud going through, and then he finishes. Oh, no, he doesn't finish. He goes back to uh, Juru again. They're, mo go mo mixing t they're mixing together well. That's what I'm trying to say. And, yeah, they work well. And Juru, he got two assists in this uh, yeah in this game. He scored, uh, not scored, assisted twice, I should say. And, yeah, very happy with his performances. As you know, with Sagna out, we had to get someone in that position. And he's actually done really well. Um... In real life, you probably don't think he's that good, but in the game, he's been fantastic to replace Sagna. And really, I was going to sign another right back, but going to next season, I can think he can be the man to do that if he needs backup, even as a central defender, because he has got pace, and he's a very strong defender as well. Then Sarabia will assist for Giroud here, and he's been fantastic. He's our leading goal scorer for the whole season. And yeah, he's just been fantastic. And like I've said previously, even more so since we signed Falcao. Because really, Giroud, he's been playing more the European games because Falcao can't play that. And Falcao's been playing in the league. As you saw, he scored against Wigan at home. And also, Theo Walker, he's been fantastic this season also. So here, Sunderland. If we win this match, as I'll show you soon, um, it will go uh, make us go a long way to winning the title. As you can see here, we've got a game in hand to Man City and three points ahead. So if we win that, I think we've got the league there, I think. Yeah. Um, 
but I don't think we'll lose. We've got a Chelsea game, but even if we lose the Chelsea game, I expect we'll win against Stoke. But we've got key matches right here. So if I can win this Sunderland match, we've got the league, I think so. And then we've got Tottenham FA Cup final, another really important match, and I do want to win that. But then we have a Chelsea four days later, which could be a important match if we don't win the Sunderland game. So I want to go through that now. And that's pretty much it. I just want to show you some regen players that I'm trying to sign, or just one right now, Casper Christensen. Because uh, a lot of them cost a lot, but they only wanted around that much that I offered, like 750k. This guy has five-star report from one of our scouts, and he looks really good in my opinion. Uh, he's positioning a bit low for a defender, but that's not too bad. His pace isn't great, but hopefully that can slowly improve. And yeah, he's got really good attributes, and he's only 15 as well. And he, yeah, and I'm not sure if he's going to turn... Yeah, he's going to turn 16 in one day, so your birthday the next day. So I have to check which of the fifth month is May, obviously. But anyway, moving on now, we just need to simulate for the next couple of games. As you can see, results here, Mad City, they won against Man United. So that really kicks them out of the race uh, to win the title. As you can see here, Man United, they basically have no chance now. So it's either me or Man City, but it will be a really big mistake to lose it from here. As you can see, Chelsea, they're dominating as well. Um, so much attacking players. Look, Hazard scoring, Jovetic and Torres to finish it off. And yeah, they didn't have Bar because I started this when not on the update. But here, as you can see, Chelsea, they still have a game as well. So they're someone to look out for as well. Chelsea still have a slight chance, especially if they win the game against us. It could be a very, very tight finish if I don't win this match right here. As you can see, we qualify for the Champions Cup, obviously. But we have got a final against Barcelona in this Champions Cup. We didn't. We only expected to like get in the quarter final, so very happy with exceeding that expectations. So we've got FA Cup final. We won the Capital One Cup as well, and now we're in the Champions League final. So I'm really happy with my first season and um, my tactics seeming to be good. So this team, I just want to keep improving it. So like I said, it can come pretty much unbeatable. And yeah, um, because I've got some people I'm playing against. Uh, like friends and that, like, um, yeah, just friendly matches, stuff like that, just for fun. And yeah, I want to beat them and that kind of thing. You know, you want to win against your friends. But anyway, moving on, we've got Rossi here. He's, this guy is another regen. He's only got a one-star current ability right now, but potential ability of five stars. And he's only five, yeah, he's only 15 as well. So he's got, he's very good. He's got great attributes already, like passing 14, technique 13. Uh, finishing 15, dribbling 15 as well, corners 15, determination very determined as well, uh, off the ball 12, that should increase, that's very high for mental attributes because you know they just generally increase as they get older, and I would approach to sign him right now, but I don't have the funds, as you know, I could do him as a, only way I could do it, as a key player, but obviously he's not going to be a key player, and I just got to be careful of the funds right now, and he's considering a contract offer, but you know there's heaps of regions out there. If I can't get him, I'll get another one, but I may have to pay some extra money to get him as he's got a long contract. So, But I can still approach the sign as well. So I'm just wondering, uh, yeah, I can approach the sign him at any time pretty much. So I just maybe wait till next season until I get uh, the funds. But anyway, I'll try and stop. Uh, talk. Okay, we've got Christensen. Um, uh, definitely excited to get this guy right here. Hot prospect. Hopefully can just, hopefully accepts that just uh, 100k less. Or the hundred dollars less, uh, less, I should say. But yeah, accept him. Hopefully, he can be a future. And I reckon that's such a bargain because you know this year it's really hard. Um, the people, um, Sports Interactive, they made the game so much better. Um, to really steal young players from top teams, uh, they you really have to pay a lot of money. Like there was this guy from uh, um, Bayern Munich. Um, he's basically similar to him. Uh, he's from Turkey or a Turkish German, like Meza Özil is. And he wanted, they wanted like 30 million for him. But Casper uh, Christensen right here, um, he's very cheap. Even though he's injured right now, getting him for less than a million, he has very good potential. I'm not sure if he has information. And I had not touted to be anyone, but in his scout report, potential to be a leading Premier Division uh, central defender. So I'm very excited about the potential of him. And hopefully um, he can just be one of those uh, central defenders for the future, which I actually wanted. We really need a future defender. We've got a couple... Um, regenerated through this season, Simon Tipple. Um, I'll show you him right now in case you defend. Oh, also, Erdley, like I said, um, 
actually on my Wigan series on FM Scout TV. I'm trying to sign him, but also I thought I might as well sign him for Arsenal for backup because I think he's better than Carl Jenkinson. So if you can pick him up for a free um, in a couple of weeks at the end of the month right here, if he doesn't renew his contract, I reckon that'd be a pretty good thing. But look right here, look at his average rating. He's been fantastic for Blackpool in the championship. They've been like mid-table, so he might want to leave. But look, these crossing, passing, their key attributes. As you know, I like my fullbacks to attack and he can be perfect for that. As you see, he can. he's really showing he's a great player for championship and definitely deserves, and by his attributes, to come up to the next level in the Premier League. And really, I just want to like prevent any other teams getting him. And look at those preferred moves as well. Fantastic. He's good at shooting, gets up the attacks down the wing. Very good. So he could be a great backup in case Sagna gets in. Yeah, in case Sagna gets injured. But looking at his attributes, he's almost better than Sagna. And he's a bit younger as well. 24. He may improve slightly, not heaps. But he is 24, so he's at least got like six or seven years to play. And he could be really good signing if we can pick him up for free as a backup. But, you know, we've got Wallace as well. He might just come in there till Wallace gets a bit more experience. Just got to see uh, Messi. I just want to get through all these things right now because, you know, I do want to... Ma my latest video, I made it a bit longer and people said they like that. So I definitely um, want to do what people like and hopefully you enjoy it. And like I said, look all these under-18 players we've got playing right now. Oh, Serge Nabry, he's definitely someone for the future as well. He was already at the team. He's got pace. I made Podolski teach him a bit of stuff, give him the tutoring by him. And he's, he's got very, very good technique. 15 already, only 17. He's got the pace. And he's pretty strong as well. So hopefully he can be a future player, but you just got to see. And he could be the next Peter Trukowski. And I think he's a good player as well. So hopefully he can improve. And like I said, my other defender we have... Um, okay, if you didn't see my other, where I showed the regen players we've got through our youth academy, this guy is one. He looks like a superstar, only 15 as well, and doesn't turn 16 till the end of December like in next season. So he's going to be a superstar, in my opinion, can improve so much already. And we've got a best striker as well. I might as well show you all these players that are playing for the under-19s. Um, we've got Chuba Akpom, who is ready at the team. Obviously, he could be a good striker as well, but I sort of don't like players that I don't have a picture of. But yeah, that's just me. And then we've got Michael Grelly. Uh, he's Australian striker, actually. Not sure why England are trying to steal him for. Not happy about that, but honestly, I don't really care too much about that unless I make him the manager of Australia later in the season. But this is one guy, one reason I want to play heaps into the career. No doubt, this guy's going to have 20-20 finishing, and he's just going to be absolutely lethal. Look at those mental attributes, fit as well. He's going to be a superstar, I hope, anyway. And hopefully he chooses to play for Australia, not England. <laughs> but anyway, uh, moving on from that, and we've got Kevin Brennan as well. He's a different, definite prospect. He's a pacey right back, someone for the future, good tackling as well. Um, also, we've got Nathaniel Mass. I actually signed him on a free transfer, did not pay anything for him. He didn't even have a club. He was just one player you find without a club. I actually found him randomly. Uh, randomly, I just typed Mass for whatever reason. I cannot remember why. Just in the search, and he came up. So that was kind of a luck thing that happens sometimes. But anyway, I want to move on from that to show these two matches. Christensen, very happy to get him. So we're getting a lot of these regens. We're great defenders for the future, great strikers for the future. So definitely, this team is going to be really beast in the future. But right now, we're in the Champions League final. We won the Capital One Cup final. Um, win the FA Cup final and we're first in the league so we can just keep on with this road but I may lose motivation of playing if I win everything straight away I wouldn't know what to do but I definitely want to keep this team because of playing against other people definitely um, because it's fun like having a beast team to play against other people but anyway um, moving on from that and here's our match against Sunderland this is really key if we win this we should have the league right here and look at all these players fit right here Falcao um, I'll bring Giroud in because he's been fantastic. Maybe take Vidio off. He's still young, so he's not someone I want to put in already. Uh, yeah, like I said, Giroud. Um, Falcao has superb morale. Falcao is just a beast, as you see by his attributes. Just look at this right here. He's just great heading. He's a bit pacey as well. He's very creative as well for a striker. So, yeah. I'm really happy with him. 27 years of age. That's a great age for a striker. That's when you really expect them to play at their peak. And yeah, for the next couple of years, he should be doing that for this team, Arsenal. So I really would like it if he could do that. Anyway, we've got to bring in our best players here, Arteta. But I can't forget, we've got an FA Cup match next, the final against Tottenham. So that's going to be very important. Um, Garmash, I just want to keep playing him. He's the new signing we signed at the start of the season because we did need that player to replace Alexander Song. But also, I sent Francis Coquelin out on loan, so he's coming back as well. So we've got heaps of competition for places, which can only be good for the team uh, and it will make our players play at their best. Now, we take Gibbs out. He's not that good, in my opinion. I may try and sell him. I'm not sure about you. But please give your suggestions as well. But to me, 
he doesn't look great. If you compare him to Santon as well, I suppose, yeah, they've got about the same pace, but defensively, Santon is just better, and mentally, he isn't that great. So I may look to sell him into next season, but I'll probably have to look into get another future left back. Because, look, if you compare him to Santon, who can also play on the right side, yeah, he's just a beast. Look at that, and he's younger as well, like 22. So, yeah, he's just so good. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to try and get in some players here. Walcott, he's got superb morale. Uh, I might rest Kazola for the FA Cup final. I've got to really um, get these players correct. Like I said, I'll probably take Gibbs out, bring Rosicki. He's pretty good. And Wilshire as well. We've got heaps of players right here. I definitely want to have Wilshire on the bench. And I think we'll take out Jenkinson. Then I'll put um, uh, Johan Juru. Like I said, he's been fantastic for us. I'll put Wilshire on the bench. Actually, I'm going to take Ayu. I definitely want to win this match. So basically, I have the league sewn up, hopefully. I yeah, put Jack Wilshire in there and perfect positions right there. Anyone? Because uh, sort of when I do it live, sometimes I really got to make sure I have the right players in because normally when I play, I always double check that I have all the good players in. Jovino, uh, make sure he's fit. My, just give him some late matches in the season. Oxlade Chamberlain, he's injured for the whole remaining games of the season. Sagna, he's almost fit. Should I risk him or should I leave him out for the whole season? I'm uh, not sure yet. Uh, unfortunately, Lawrence Koscielny, he's not fit as well. Just might give him those games in the re reserve squad right there. But anyway... I think everything is okay. It looks okay to you. looks okay to me. Um, we've got our defenders there. Murder Sacker, 94%. Um, actually, I'm going to not put Koscielny for match fitness. I'm just going to take him off that. And I'll just save him for the next match. And hopefully that can do well. Even though he's injured, we may need him. Depending on the fitness of the other players. And yeah, hopefully this can be good. If not, um, we still have other matches to win. But... And playing away against Sunderland, they're 19th. So really, we should be expected to win against a team that's um, in the relegation zone. If they don't win this, they need to play attacking to win because they're the relegation. They need to win their remaining matches to really not get relegated. So it's an important match for them as well, as you see here. Um, it's going to be hard for them to not get relegated right there. Wigan, only two matches left to play as well. It's going to be really a tough ask. They need Wigan not to get results and they need to win the rest of their matches. So it's going to be tough. And here, they've got poor morale, so really, we should win this match. Steve Fletcher, their main goal scorer. Let's just um, hard tackle him, and hopefully he doesn't score. And yeah, I'm not really worried here. Their um, morale is very poor, and our morale is just superb in most players. And yeah, the only player really for us, Dennis Garmash. He's the only guy who hasn't had fantastic morale throughout the season. And Sunderland, I always like their um, kind of ground, how it looks right here. But anyway, moving on from that... Uh, what players do we have on here? We've got Podolski and Walcott. So if they definitely want to run at defense. I really want to make sure... Oh, they might score here. Didn't expect that. So I definitely need to go on run at defense right here. Mm. But there's always these games in Football Manager um, that you're playing away against a team that's not that great, but s somehow you just can never win that match. Um, I kind of did something you shouldn't do, um, like in Football Manager 2012. Like there was this game, I dominated every time I... Like, I played it, and I lost, like, 1-0, and they had, like, one shot. So I reloaded the game, which I don't normally do. But the thing is, I reloaded it, like, five times. It always came the same result, 1-0. So that was a bit fishy. But here, look at that. Falcao, what a goal was that? I'm not playing in 3D, so you can't really see how that is. And in 3D, like, if you're watching the YouTube video, for me, when I watch them with the people who do it in 3D, it seems too far away. It's hard to see the players. But look at that strike by Falcao. He bent it in. See that bent on that shot? I'm not sure if Carlos Kula um, touched that, but um, yeah, he had curl on that shot. Fantastic strike right there by Falcao. And great to get that goal back. But like I said, sometimes there's just some matches in Football Manager that you can never win no many times. Yeah, they're just against you in that match. And really, it's hard to win every single match in the season if you want to try and do that. But eventually, I want to try and do that. Even if I have a beast team, I know one match throughout the season, I always lose. But here... I think we're getting injuries at Arteta. That's not a great thing to happen right there. We've got some very important matches because you've got all these important cup matches. We can win the league if we just get the results here. Falcao should get something here. Wilshere, uh, very close there, but no cigar right there. So, and Arteta, he's off. Hopefully, he comes back on here. Uh, I'm very disappointed not to score here. Well, it's a very good chance, as you can see um, by the commentary. It said there was only one outcome there, but it wasn't to be... And we couldn't score Arteta. He seems to be going up in his condition. So that's a good sign. And his rating is getting back up. So not to worry there, hopefully. Um, and actually, I don't mind going in a draw at halftime, especially playing away. I just give them assertive team talk. Really tell them I expect them to be doing better. And the morale gets better. And really, I can predict I will win this match. <laughs> like I'm saying it now. But 
Um, apart from Podolski, he's looking nervous. Actually, Podolski, he hasn't really impressed me. He scored some goals this season, but I don't know. There's just something about him. Uh, yeah, uh, sorry about that. Uh, my mic got a bit tangled right there, so I'm not sure if it makes some background noise. But anyway, um, moving on from that, like I said, I want to get uh, Lucas Podolski out. Like I said, he hasn't been fantastic. I want to bring in Pablo Sarabi. He's got a bit more pace, a bit more dribbling ability, and he can create something. I think get the crosses into the box for Falcao or Walcott. And Arteta, I might rest him for the FA Cup match. And let's bring on... Who do we have in the bench right here? We've got um, Ramsey or Rosicki. Ramsey has superb morale. He's definitely going to be the man, hopefully. And now, um, I think that's all I'll do for now. Um, and let's start the second half. And hopefully, this can be a good result. we got uh, two substitutions, saving one for later in the game. If we get someone injuries or something like that, you know that is always a chance to happen. So here, they got a kick in. Hopefully, we can create something from here on the counter-attack, but it's not to be. They Now, they make the counter-attack, actually. But hopefully, we can still make it intercept. See, we really force them into long balls, and really nothing, most of the time, 9 out of time, uh, nine, 9 out of 10 times, it doesn't eventuate to anything. But Walker here, look at that. Then Falcao, he is worth all the money I paid for him. I know some people might think I paid too much money as we're losing a bit of money now. Like, we're in the red a little bit. Um, not our overall balance, but just like the latest month, we lost a bit more money. But really, the next couple of seasons, I'm basically not going to sign any big players. I'm just going to leave the squad we have because really, we can win the league already, which we are doing. Um, we're getting in the finals of Champions Cup, uh, FA Cup. So really, we don't need to improve our squad. Our young players are just going to keep playing well together. And like I said, we don't need to spend the money. And then Sarabia, like I said, that should have been another goal. We're just dominating in the final third and also defensively as well. We've only conceded like 22 goals in the league, but now 23. That's really, we've conceded like 23 goals in like 36 games. That's fantastic um, in my opinion. But here, again, on the counter-attack from a long ball from the goalkeeper, Pablo Sarabia, he's so good. He's getting into the second half of the season. He's been fantastic. Look at that cross, Walcott. He is going to be a beast, Sarabia, down that left side in the future. And we've got Fadio as well on the right side. But don't forget Walcott as well, Oxlade-Chamberlain. We've got so much options as well, so that's one good thing. And also, like I said, we've got Oxlade-Chamberlain injured, Sagna injured. So we still got injured players, and we're basically still dominating teams. You see, we won against Man United in the Champions Cup, so... A lot of the time in previous games, I found it hard to win against those really bigger teams. Uh, so let's see here. Anyone we can um, substitute off to save for fitness? Again, really poor set piece by them. That looked to be out by Chesney. But here we look to make the counter attack. Short ball again to Santon. Sarabia, just, he is so good. I recommend you, if you have the money signing, we'll put the ball in again. Creates Falcao. He should have scored that. Every time Sarabia, he puts a cross in, he finds his player he's trying to find. Like I said, he's just so good. He's got the pace, he's got dribbling ability, and the crossing ability as well. The first half of the season, he was just basically settling in because he couldn't speak English fluently, but now he does. And he's just been so good, as you can see, running past his marker on every occasion, pretty much. And here, I may look to uh, leave Murder Saka on because I don't really have someone on the bench to come on for him. Um... What's our next match? The next match is the FA Cup final, not Champions League. So I think I will save Falcao for that. And I'll bring on Olivia Giroud and hopefully can score, get some goals, get his confidence up. We may need him as well. Who knows? Uh, Falcao may get, get like a midweek injury in training or something. You always got to prepare for every situation like I have done this season. I took away the FA Cup, or not the FA Cup, uh, the Capital One Cup, one that looks like we're going to win the league now. We have the FA Cup final coming up. We have a chance to win that. And we're in... <laughs> Sorry, uh, struggling to speak once again. But anyway, we're also in the Champions League final against Barcelona, against Messi. I don't really expect to win that because Messi, I expect he will just dominate us because he's the best player in the game. His attributes are so high. I don't expect to win that. So I'll be happy just to be in the final. Obviously, you want to win, but really, with Barcelona's players they have, uh-oh, here's a chance for them. But again, Chesney. He's been fantastic as well. Every player for us, basically, there's no player that has disappointed me, pretty much. Everyone has been fantastic. And really, that's the thing. You've got to get all your players playing to their potential ability, and that's how you win the league. You can't have any players really not performing to their best. Even our worst player, Jenkinson, you probably don't think he's good enough, but he's been great to come in at right back when we needed him. As you can see, a lot of players are getting tired here. Hopefully, we can just run this out. I think I'll take um, run at defense off so we can just settle it a bit down right now. But definitely want to keep scoring to keep up the goal difference because you don't know what's going to happen in the final games of the season. Then Jack Wilshere. Ooh, 
He's actually been a good goal scorer this season. He's scored like 10 goals in the league. That's fantastic. Or 10 overall goals at least in all competitions. That's fantastic for a central midfielder. And he's one reason I want to play a lot into this career because he comes into the best center mid in the game. And when I play against anyone with that, he's just going to dominate games in the center, yeah, the center of midfield. And hopefully that can be the case in the next season because I really want to become unbeaten. Not like this season. Even though we have a good chance to win the league, I really want to come unbeaten. And here, looks like we should get the win here. 3-1 away. Very impressive. So that basically means Sunderland is relegated. So they're gone. They're not going to be in the Premier League next season. So uh, fortunately for them, but they're slowly declining the last couple of seasons. But I suppose they can try and rebuild now. Maybe come up in a couple of seasons. But I'm very happy with that result. Um, only person wasn't happy with Podolski. He didn't like my team talk, so just get him out of there. And as you can see there, we pretty much dominated. 17 shots, 7 on target. And pretty much now, does that mean we win the league? Um, I'm pretty sure that means we win the league, unless we lose the next two matches. But really, I don't expect that. So we just need a draw and we've won the league. I'm pretty sure um, that is correct. Uh, if we go here, overview. Um, let's go into the... Where are we? How do you see the whole thing? Stages. Here we go. Let's see. Have we won it yet? Okay, if Manchester City win their next two games and we lose our next two, they've won it. But also, Chelsea is the same boat if they win the rest. But really, we don't look like winning the last two. We've got a match against Stoke and one against Chelsea as well. If we lose the Chelsea one, that may be um, might put a bit of doubt in our mind and give us the pressure for the Stoke match. But pretty much, we should just continue on our roads. And Theo Walcott, he's going to be injured. He's not going to be able to play in the next 10 days or so. But Falcao, again, player of the match once again. And Falcao, he's on form. And perfect time to be on form when we need to win the league. And we need to... Uh, FA Cup Finals as well. As you can see, we've got some players cup-tied. Another reason why I rested Kieran Gibbs so he can come in for that match. But Sagna, should I give him a chance? Um... Okay, he's re returning to full fitness in 27 days. Normally when you see that, it means they're coming back soon, but he was coming from a long injury, so that makes pretty much... It makes sense. And one thing I don't understand, Sagna has very good natural fitness and stamina, but he always gets injured. Don't really understand why that is the case. But anyway, uh, moving on. Walker, he's going to miss the FA Cup final. A very important match. I really want to win the FA Cup. That's like the best domestic cup. Um, so definitely want to win that. We've got F um, Tottenham in the FA Cup final. So really... We haven't done great against them. In our two games in the league that we played two games in a row, not sure why that happened. But anyway, um, yeah, we lost against them and we came a draw. Not really great results, but we're in great form right now. And in that stage, we had heaps of matches. I never do these. Um, I never respond to comments. And as you can see, it does pretty well. So I don't really need to worry about that. Uh, Lucas Slaver, I sort of wanted to chase him when I needed to search for a defensive midfielder. But I just really, because I thought Garmash could have been better as a like, deep-lying playmaker or ball-winning midfielder. But... Yeah, I'm just teaching Garmash to keep playing in that defensive midfield because it's either him or when Coquelin comes back. Actually, I want to see his proge um, uh, progress, I should say, uh, in the team we sent him out on loan because I don't think I've really showed him. Uh, and also, we've got Emmanuel Frimpong, so we've got heaps of options. So let's see if he's improving late or anything like that. Uh, he seems okay. I'm not sure if he's going to be good enough. Uh, leave your suggestions if you know how good he really develops into. But he's been a regular player for Montpellier. And yeah, he's played 23 games, 23 starts, uh, some games in the Continental as well. So um, would have they be in the Champions League if they were Champions League? Uh, very impressed with that. So he's got some much-needed experience going out on loan. That's exactly what I wanted from here, uh, from him, I should say. Anyway, back to the fixtures. As you can see, we've got an FA Cup final against Tottenham, but then a Chelsea match. If we lose that, it might put some doubt in the minds of winning the league. But I definitely want to see our goal difference, what it is. A goal difference, 46. So pretty much, we can't lose the league from here, surely. You look at our goal difference. Unless Chelsea beat us by heaps, uh, which it really, you can't see that happening. So we should really take the league home here. So I definitely want to put in our best players for um, this FA Cup final. But ma um, mathematically, we can still lose it. Like We could still have a big loss, but really, the way we're playing, um, I don't see that happening. Look at this right here. Um, where do we go? I'll go to the stages once again. Look at this. We've only conceded 23 goals in 36 games. That's fantastic. Look, the next nearest. The next nearest uh, least conceded goals is Tottenham and Manchester United 27. So we've dominated in that respect. And let's see, relegated. It looks like Swansea is going to be relegated as well. And Southampton have a slight chance. But you think Wigan will stay up and Reading just the way it is right now. But anyway, we've got an FA Cup final right here. Definitely. This is one of the most important matches. I know I've said uh, most important matches for, uh, quite a few times now, but it really is. 
We can't choose Santon. Actually, going to play Andre Ayu. I definitely want to try and win the match instead of just play for the draw or like for a low score and try and win it late. Unfortunately, Walker is injured. We can't really bring... Who can we bring in right here? A Kazola. Yeah, Kazola. Like I said, I left him in so he can play that match. Uh, everyone's got great morale, uh, but I think... Yeah, I'm just going to leave it how it is because I definitely want to win this match even if they have 95% finish some players. Like I said, I'll put Kieran Gibbs in there. Walker, unfortunately, got injured. And who can we bring on? Video. I might bring him on. If we're, like, winning the match easily, I may just give him some appearances. Yeah, appearance off the bench. Like, if it's after 60 minutes and we're dominating, just to give him that much-needed experience. And, yeah, um, Harry Maguire. I signed him for backup and a future prospect player for, like, a defensive midfield for the future or a centre-back. I haven't really had the chance to play him. I played him once in the league, got a 7 rating, so he can show he can do the job. He's a very good passer as well, good technique, so uh, he could be a good defensive midfielder as well. Just I may send him out on loan next season, just got to see how our t like squad looks. I definitely want to do a squad review um, at the start of next season to see how I can like fit him in, because I definitely got to make sure I have backup, like, like two in each position, something like that. But anyway... I think that's pretty much it for now. Going into this next game right here. Anyone that can make a difference in this FA Cup final? Um, not really. Because we've got... Everyone has superb morale right here. And last time that I put Arteta in defensive midfield to put Rosicki in, uh, that kind of failed. So definitely need a bit more defensive with Garmash. And yeah, hopefully that is the good thing to do. And sort of Rosicki, he's done good off the bench. But Murdersaka here, he's not that great with his fitness. But like I said, I was going to put Koscielny in because he's been a beast this season. So Murdersaka, he's off. But definitely, I'm going to put Murdersaka on the bench for someone that I don't think can make an impact. Um, Diaby, Kieran Gibbs. Uh, we got Vermeulen in there. So yeah, I'll put just change to Vermeulen to left back if IU gets injured or something like that. So he covered all bases. Falcao, he's just been superb with scoring. So leaving him instead of Olivier Giroud. So this should be good. The team looks good right here. Uh, definitely, Sarabia, Podolski's out. Sarabia, he's just been fantastic lately. He is a beast. Like I said, he could be the next Joaquin. He's got a four out of five star, or a four and a half star, I should say. But look at these attributes. Just keep on increasing. He's a great passer, great technique, very good crossing, 15, dribbling as well. With that technique and passing, that really is why he connects to a lot of his crosses. And yeah, Flair as well. He's got so much, just great attributes everywhere. And I'm surprised he isn't capped for Spain. Leave some suggestions until how long you think. Do you think he should uh, be capped for Spain in the game? Just look how being great he's performing, especially his most recent performances. Look at this. He's got 7 rating, 7.1, 8.1. Yeah, no really poor rating scored there, but yeah, uh, he's been assisting very well, especially in that Manchester United game. Assisted the two goals uh, in the first leg, and those three away goals proved to be very important. So hopefully... I'm pretty confident that he can be one to make the difference because he's just in such great form right now. I wouldn't be surprised he if he comes up like with an assist or something. He hasn't scored too much, but really, um, those wingers, you don't really rely on them to score. They're the ones who's going to get the crosses in. So here, uh, they've got Sigurdsson and Lennon out wide. Got to be careful of Lennon, but really, um, we've got Juru to cover him. Oh, Juru to cover him on the right side. Um, and Sigurdsson, are you? He should really take care of Sigurdsson. So we've just got to see what happens in this match. And their defense... Yeah, the defense really solid as well. So, yeah, it's going to be close. And obviously, they're a good team. Falcao could potentially win the top goal scorers. And look at that. Our two strikers are in the top uh, players here. So, um, I wouldn't be surprised if one of our players win that golden boot for that. So, I'm pretty sure Falcao will because he's the one on. But if he's not performing, you think um, Giroud will come on. And he'll be the odds on to score if I bring him on. But here, a lot of their players is not fit. See, we seem to manage our players better. We've got better overall condition on our starting play so hopefully that can be the difference but you know we haven't had a great record against Tottenham two games played and no wins a draw and a loss so yep yeah, very difficult just I'm going to tell them to enjoy themselves uh oh um <laughs> looks relaxed maybe overly so for Sarabia I think uh, he knows what to do he's a smart lad so yeah, he's got yeah he's got 14 assists. That's really crazy for someone coming in for their first season. Just imagine what he can do in future seasons. Definitely, like I said, if you're like a top four team and you need like attacking like a left winger, um, he's really someone to go for. Yeah, someone to go for. Even though he may cost around 30 million, he's just such a great player. He may not do good the first half of the season, but like you've seen now, he's just dominating, connecting with all these crosses. Like I've said, and here we seem to be. Having just that bit extra possession, but Tottenham seem to be getting a bit now. Uh, Kazola, um, he's not into the book. Pretty lucky with that. Um, hopefully, we can just continue right now. Um, our players are not that great. Look here, we've got Seems Aggressive. 
some players composed, but it is a final. It's hard to be really, like, really motivated in finals. It, like, players seem to get, like, they're not confident in finals or they're a bit nervous and that kind of thing. But my players are aggressive and composed instead of nervous. I suppose that's better, apart from uh, Johan Juru, but obviously you can't get all your players all the same. But now they're looking anxious, but it always changes for whatever reason. Um, I'm not sure to be happy with this or not. Okay, we've got Sarabia Kazula. I'm not sure to run at defense or not because they're not really so pacey players. They've like, got all right pace, but they're better with dribbling. So i just got to leave it how it is. Um, let's see what happens here. Hope we can make a counter-attack once again. Kazola intercepting, but it went straight back to them. And really, I have a feeling they're going to score right now. In these games where you don't dominate and then they get a chance, really, I always seem to get conceded goals. But, you know, we haven't conceded so many this season. But then Adebayor, he had a chance to score against his old team, but it wasn't to be his day right then. But he still has chances later in the match. But I'm pretty happy. If we can go in nil-nil, I'll do I'm not happy with the result so far. And then I should dominate, like I said, in the last match. That always... I would actually rather to go in nil-nil than, like, winning one nil because... Um, really, <laughs> what the, uh, it won't count, that's happened a few times, if you see my live episodes, a lot of the time, it hasn't counted, so, I'm very lucky there, thought we conceded, but like I was saying, I prefer to go in nil-nil than winning 1-0, because they might become complacent, because when it's nil-nil, I can actually say you're not performing well, like, if you're winning 1-nil, you can't say that, or the body language would be pretty messed up, uh, because obviously they play well, but here now I can actually say they play bad. Like I'm far from pleased with what I saw, and here that's exactly why I want to be nil nil. Exactly, I'm very happy it showed that, so I can explain what I'm basically talking about. I know to some people it might sound a bit stupid, but that's exactly why. And now I wouldn't be surprised if we go ahead and score a couple games and win this FA Cup final. So hopefully we can apply the pressure, and definitely I wouldn't be surprised. See players looking motivated straight away. We've got three motivated players. Um, Self-assured as well, Thomas Vermeulen, our captain. So hopefully this can make the difference. You've got Lohan Kishalny. You know he's just coming back from a slight niggle. So I may have to substitute him, but he's been a great defender. Arteta injuring one of their players. Well done, Arteta. And then that's Adebayor on for Defoe, I think. Uh, yeah, Defoe. Um, but no goals right here. So I may have to look to make a substitution. Just got to see if anything happens in the next couple minutes. Arteta... Um, we've got a, yeah, Kazola isn't playing that great. Unfortunately, we don't have Walker or, yeah, Walker or Oxlade Chamberlain to bring him on for. So hopefully, uh, that can make the difference. You've got Jack Wilshere. So hopefully, I can find someone to bring on. I think the man to come on is Rizitsky. Hopefully, he can make a difference right here. Just swapping with Arteta. Arteta's a bit better at ball winning. And Rizitsky, a bit better at creating. And Kazola, he's in performing. So we may have to bring on, should we give Vadio a go? For, he's a very young player, very inexperienced, but I'm just going to go with it. I'm going to give him the chance. Um, the two young Spanish players on the right and on the left, the natural size. He's um, got a bit of pace and flair, so hopefully he can make the difference. And really, he's done well when I... But I have to say, I've played him in easy matches, but he has got good ratings, as you can see there. Um, he's had some Spain under-21 caps. He's worth $16 million. Hopefully, he can make the difference. Got to save that one more substitute, maybe... Uh, for whatever reason, late in the game, may get an injury to a defender or something like that. So, got to save that. I just say the pressure is off. And for, vid uh, yeah, for video as well. Um, both players relax. So, really, everything is going well. And hopefully, if we don't score like until like 75 minutes, I may have to look to bring Oliver Giroud on for Falcao. Because that's what I've normally done. When the striker isn't really scored or haven't done anything much. Uh, but yeah, now, of course, I'm going to do run at defense to try and win this match right here. Uh, where are we? Yep, control the final third uh, and run in defense. So that's something that can really that I normally do to win us the matches. Okay, play. Whew, this is a very tough match here, but really I expect it to be tight. Tottenham, they've been hard to beat this season, as I've like I've said numerous times. And really, it's an FA Cup final. It's not expected to be here um, easy. Are you playing as fullback, getting playing very attacking? Falcao. Ooh, that could have been a good chance right there. But back to Sarabia. Looking to create. Looking to create. Oh, Rizitsky. That was a very good chance. But again, there's still something happening right here. Giroud. Pretty good tackle there. And we're just going to go back on the counter-attack. And really, apart from the one chance by Adebayor, they really haven't had any chances in this game. So, I think next couple minutes, I'll just see what happens here. Arteta, Vidio. Oh, he should have scored that. He should have scored... Maybe if that was another player, he would have scored. Maybe he's just a bit young, inexperienced. But I didn't really have anyone else natural in that position. Uh, should I take off Arteta? He's on a yellow card. Sorry, I can't risk. I cannot risk getting a red card in this match. 
Should I bring on Ramsey? Yep, he scored. He scored on numerous occasions this season. I think these can be the players to get a winner for us. What do you think? Uh, leave some suggestions so you can score a winner. Definitely, I think. We'll bring, who we bring on right here? Um, oh no, I'm going with the guest Sarabia. He's in great form. I just have a feeling he's going to do something, either score or assist. He's going to create the goal. I just have a feeling that he's going to be the man to win this game for us. And really, we've still got Falcao. He's a great finisher. Wouldn't be surprised if Sarabia assists for Falcao to win the match for us late in the game. Um, you've got to see what happens. As you can see, we're dominating possession. I think I might as well get the ball forward, like try and score a late winner. Uh, where are we here? Um, get the ball forward in like just this little extra time period. I'm trying to press it, but it doesn't seem to be wanting to happen. But when it goes to extra time, I'll just take that off. And yeah, it's going to go to extra time. Uh, so I'll just remove that now. And yeah, it might even go to penalty shootout. I want to give another a different. Uh, this is one. I should say I'm far from please. Uh, let's see what happens here again. When you're not winning, that does a thing. All my players look motivated or fired up, and really, I'm pretty surprised that we didn't score a winner. But we did have chances, like you saw. So yeah, we could have got the winner already. But really, I think we'll dominate it from uh, here on out. As you can see, still dominating possession. Wasn't like the other games, but like I said, look at that by Kashani. He's bossing in defense, but look at Vermalen as well. 8.6 rating. He's been fantastic. Uh oh, he's getting injured. This is bad. I have a bad feeling. Hopefully, he can just if he keeps going down, this is going to be bad. We're going to have one less player. I don't know what's going to happen now. Only 40%. And uh, we may have to look to go for penalty shootout if that's going to happen. Half time and extra time. I can't do team talks again. So I'm not sure what to do from here. Um, extra half. Actually, we have. I want that get the ball forward off. I don't... Yeah, I'm not really sure on that because I want us to pass, not just boot it forward. And hopefully we can create something late here. And if not, we're going to have to just rely on the penalty shooter. But you know, late in the game, players get tired. So we may be able to exploit their defense um, if we create something late here. So hopefully it can make the difference because definitely want to pass it through the defense. And that's what I'd normally... How I get my goal. So like we don't have Walcott to exploit the pace. So... Here, there may be a late chance, but it doesn't really seem... Heaps of players look tired, so I think it's just going to be penalty shootout. Um, very tough. A lot of our players are on low on fitness, so I'm not sure how this will pan out. Got to select my penalty takers here. Uh, we've got two of our best penalty takers off, which is not good. Not good at all. Um, but we've got Falcao. I think we'll put Falcao. He's very reliable. He should be one to score first. And Andre Ayu. Oh, we've got some good... Uh, Garmash, I guess he can be one there. Vermaelen. He's low on fitness. So I don't know if it's going to... No, I'll just put him in. Then Sarabia to score the fifth one. And if we really need to, we've got 12. And then Aaron Ramsey. And then put a video, I guess. And I, I think it'll be over since then. So wish me luck for this. Even though I, this video would have been already done. And our fate would have been sealed. But I definitely want to get this victory in penalty shootout. I've had actually pretty, uh, pretty good records in penalty shootouts. One against Wigan with Man uh, against Man City. He up. Parker scores. Puts the pressure on. So, Falcao, the main striker for us, the big money signing this season. Can he put it home? He does. I really, I would have been disappointed if he didn't. And really, I had the faith in him anyway. So here, Glenn Johnson, a defender. What can Chesney do? He saves it. Fantastic save. And really, I wouldn't be surprised if Wojek Chesney, he wins this game for us. And here's Ayu, Andre Ayu. Can he score it? He does. Very composed there. Just put into the bottom of the net to the right-hand side with his left foot. But now Clint Dempsey to bring it back to score their second. They just missed. But again, the pressure was on him and he failed. It looks like we're going to win this now. But we've got Garmash, the guy with the very poor morale for us. And I really, I wasn't surprised with that. He's been our least confident player throughout the season. And that gives Tottenham the slightest of chance with Jermaine Defoe. And he scores. So the pressure is slightly on now. Could the pressure tell on our players? Thomas Vermaelen. He's the captain, but he's low on fitness. What will be the result of that? He finishes. We should take this penalty shootout home now. If Jan Vertonghen, if he misses this, um, Vermaelen, his country mate, and Chesney, he saves it. We are FA Cup champions, picking up both of the, the both the domestic cups this season. So happy with that. Vermaelen, deserving of the man of the match, basically scoring the winning penalty goal and defending fantastically. But Chesney, he was a fantastic goalkeeper to save some penalties to win the FA Cup final. So very happy with my performances in these couple matches. Leave your thoughts and all that kind of thing. We'll appreciate likes, comments, because like I've always said, when I get likes and also comments, uh, if you're watching the video, please leave a comment because 
Um, sometimes I don't know like if people are actually watching or just watching it then not watching the whole video or hardly watching any of it. So if you watch it and you enjoyed it, please leave a comment or like because it really lets me though lets me know that people are watching the video. And also, leave some suggestions for things that I don't show that you may want to see. As you can see, another achievement unlocked for Steam Cup Glory once again. And we take uh, yeah, take home the FA Cup in front of the 90,000 crowd. Fantastic performance by the boys. We've got both domestic cups won, like I said. Picking up the money for winning the cup final. Another, as you can see, we do the double. Can we do the treble? Or even the quadruple, or whatever it's called. Winning the Champions League, but I doubt. Yeah, quadruple, that's what it's called. Um... That you look at that. We're doing fantastic. I'm doing fantastic. Everything. I'm getting all these good messages right here. Everything. Let's see. Against our rivals as well. Not to forget. Very fantastic performances. And really, that makes up for the league losses against it. Or the one loss and the draw against them. Vermeulen. He's been a fantastic captain for us. Dominating when we needed him the most. Just look at those fantastic attributes. He's in his peak as well. Fantastic defender. Can play on the left side. Defensive midfielder as well. Everything here is fantastic. We qual um, Tottenham qualify for the Euro Cup. That's good for them, I suppose. Squad bonus. I suppose that's the only downside. We have to give money to our players. But I didn't do it on high. Bonuses, just medium. Because if you do it on high, you give so much money. And we really need that money right now. And as you can see, that puts Tottenham... Obviously, uh, they're in the Euro Cup. Uh, they would have qualified for that anyway. Unless they lose the rest of the... No, nah, it doesn't matter. Because Liverpool's too far away. Um, Norwich done surprisingly well. But there's still a couple games in the season left. So yeah, very happy with this, winning the FA Cup. Um, really, pretty much, we should win the league now, as you can see, unless there's some disaster, because we've got a 7-plus goal difference to Man City and 6-plus to Chelsea, even though we are playing against them. If Chelsea win against us, uh, it's going to have to be a big loss by us. It may put the pressure on. They're probably going to have to win 4-0, because really, we're not going to lose against Stoke, you would think. So we should have the league wrapped up, but who knows what's going to happen? what's going to happen in the final matches. Like I said, Chesney clean sheets. Everything has just happened fantastic in this season. We're winning everything in sight. But the most fantastic, if we can win the Champions League against Barcelona in the final, I'm going to do that live match. I'm just going to play through the next couple matches. Then I'll do uh, Champions Cup final live. So you're going to find out if I win the Premier League in the next video. And I'm going to show you the Champions Cup, probably the most important game. Uh, most important thing you could win in the game, the Champions League. I regard it a, bi regard it a bit highly uh, than winning the Premier League. But if I can win all four, what is more I can do? If I win all of those four, uh, there's nothing really more I can do. That means, like, do you want me to keep continuing with Arsenal if I win everything right here? Or do you want me to start a new career or just want me to keep going with Arsenal so you see how the younger players progress and see if I can just retain the title in all these competitions? So, yeah, leave a like, comment. I'll much appreciate it. And I'll see you guys next time.